Hi, it's Olga from SEO Sly. In this video, I want to quickly show you how to audit an XML sitemap of any website. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing you have to know where the sitemap of the site you want to audit is. In most cases, it should be in the standard location, which is simply the domain name slash sitemap. Let's go to the robots text. And this is a WordPress site. So by default, the sitemap is indicated here. So this is my XML sitemap. A thing to note here. So if you are auditing the WordPress site, which has the sitemap in, in, generated by some SEO tool like rank math, in many cases, the sitemap generated will be okay, but of course, not always. And the purpose of us auditing the sitemap is to check whether it contains the URLs it should contain. And the question is what URLs should sitemap contain? So first of all, this should be only the URLs that you, the website owner wants to get indexed and ranked in Google. These are the only URLs and sh these should be canonical URLs, which means the main original version of the content, because in some cases you may have like different versions of content on your site, or you can have pages with parameters. And in most cases, you don't want those pages with parameters to be indexed, but you want the main canonical version without parameters. So canonical indexable pages that you want to get ranked. These are the pages that return status code 200, which, which means okay. If the page returns state, status code 404, not found. This is not the page you want to put on the website if the page is redirected. 301, 302, you also don't want that page to be in the sitemap because why? Because Google will simply have to go through that redirect and will waste, you will waste Google's time, Google's crawl budget. This is not an issue in the case of small sites, but in the case of big sites, this can be an issue if you have millions of pages on the sitemap and all of those pages are redirected. So you are wasting Google's valuable time and resources. Okay. So let me show you how to audit a website. I like to do it with screaming frog. So you found the website. This is the URL. You copy it. Then you go to, let's go to screaming frog. You have to configure screaming frog so that it will crawl the list of URLs. So you go to mode list upload, and here you have download XML sitemap and you simply paste the URL of the sitemap. Okay. Screaming Frog will find all the, all the URLs that the sitemap has. You simply click okay. And you start, start the crawl. Of course, depending on the type of site, you may or may not want to, uh, execute JavaScript by default. I think my configuration in Screaming Frog is that I execute JavaScript. Yes. Yeah, so if this is a huge site. You always need to like analyze and assess whether you need to, uh, you need to execute JavaScript. If the site has JavaScript, you want to do that because the content may be different from what you have without executing JavaScript and with executing JavaScript. My sitemap is getting crawled and, and let's wait for that. And uh, we will see what the result is. Let me get back to my, to this sitemap here. So. This is, for example, the sitemap generated by, by rank math. So it can also, for example, show you the category pages. It can also show you tag pages, depending on how you set it up in, in rank math or in Yoast or in any other SEO plugin, if we are talking about a WordPress site. So I only, I checked that setting that says that I only want to posts and pages to be included in the sitemap. I think rank math by default will also not include non-indexable pages in the site math, but if you are really, if you have really messed up the site, you may also see some surprising pages here. So that's why I recommend doing auditing the site, the, the site map this way. You can also, together with a regular crawl, you can also do a normal crawl. You can crawl the site and crawl this. You can crawl the site and at the same time crawl the sitemap. 
This is also a useful thing because, for example, the site, you may see some links that are only visible if that the crawler can only see if, the, if it goes through the site because they are linked somewhere deep in the structure and they are not indicated in the sitemap. That's why in many cases, depends on the context of the website, on the situation, on the, on the reason you are hired to do the audit. In some cases, you may both audit the site and audit the sitemap and crawl the site and crawl the sitemap and look for differences. For example, that some indexable canonical pages that the crawler finds are not indicated in the sitemap or vice versa. Here, I am crawling my sitemap to look for pages that potentially shouldn't be there, like non-indexable pages, redirected pages, 404 pages. But this does not mean that I have the entire full picture of the site. So let's wait for the crawler to fit and we'll see. In this case, I will see all the pages here in HTML because this is what I this is one that, this is what I wanted to, to, to check. I can sort them by address. It will be maybe easier for me or by indexability. And I can see, okay, uh, there are a few problems. So this is a few problems. This is the URL and this is non-indexable. This is redirected. Here is the 404 in the sitemap. So a few things appear here. What I want you to, to pay attention to is always the scale of the website, the gravity of the issue, because if it is a small site, like my site has 100 something pages, if it is a small site, this is not an issue because sitemaps are for Google to crawl and discover and index new pages. And if crawl budget isn't an issue for your site, and if your site is a smaller one, or you don't have content that's rapidly changing, then any issues in your sitemap won't really be anything that you should be worrying about too much. So that's something you always have to keep in mind. The same story, if you are auditing the site that has millions of pages and you spot five wrong URLs in the sitemap, then I wouldn't really mark that as an issue or as a high priority issue in the audit because it, it simply doesn't matter the scale of this problem is so small that it, it won't have any effect. And especially if your client, the site you're auditing is a huge e-commerce site where it is hard to get things implemented. There are a lot of people through which the decision ha has to go then I wouldn't even bother them with changing, removing those five URLs from the sitemap because uh, this may take months and this may make you unable to do other more important changes. And usually these are like any serious technical issues or usually in most cases, the thing that should be done is optimization of existing content, keyword mapping, and adding new content or on enriching existing content and internal linking. And usually these are the things you want to focus on um, instead of correcting a few URLs on the sitemap. Okay. The crawl is done and we can run crawl analysis as well. And let's see. So these are, since I was crawling, I was using this feature this mode list and I only crawled the URLs on my sitemap. I can use this, this report HTML to simply view the pages that I have on my sitemap. If I crawl the site and additionally ask the screaming frog to crawl the sitemap, which you can do here, you can do configuration spider and you can also, for example, indicate the sitemaps to crawl here and crawl the site, then you, what you see here in HTML, those will be like all the URLs that crawler was able to discover. This won't be the URLs in the sitemap. So you have to like be aware of the mode you used and what this mode actually can show you. If you crawled um, the entire site and the sitemap, then you will see that in the report that's called sitemap, I think sitemaps, yes, sitemaps. And here 
you will see the URLs that were in the sitemap and the URLs, for example, that crawler discovered while, while crawling the site, but were that were not in the sitemap or from URLs, which is the URLs that are not linked from anywhere or non-indexable URLs in the sitemap. So as you can see, here are those non-indexable URLs that crawler, crawler found in my sitemap. And potentially this is the issue, the only issue I have with my sitemap. Very useful report. As I said, I'll take into account the scale, the, and most importantly, the size of the website, because if this is a small site, this is a nice exercise for you. Better understand sitemaps, better understand issues that the sitemap might have, better understand Screaming Frog, but if it is a small site, yes, especially a WordPress site, you can leave that alone. So if I were to be like a per perfectionist, then I would have to go back and remove those URLs from the sitemap because these are 404, these are 301. And I think uh, they are shown in the sitemap because Normally, if you add a new page in WordPress and this page is non-indexable, I think it won't be added to rank math by default, but I think these were live pages, then I turned them into drafts. So they return 404, but they are live. And I think that's why, for example, here rank math still shows them in the sitemap. So there are some, if I trashed them, I think they would disappear. So that's a caveat here. Okay, so I think you learned a bit here about auditing sitemaps and I hope it will help you in your next SEO audit. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.